Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Prepare ourselves for Ramadan. This is, it's not a lecture about fasting, but we're going to go with details in the fiqh. The class is comparative fiqh, and we're going to, uh, inshallah, uh, try to, to get a clear idea, but in the same time, it's a, we're going to learn more about about the comparative fiqh, about the different schools, and we go from from there, inshallah. So uh, what we're going to use a few books. We talked last week about the different books that have a comparative fiqh. Comparative fiqh means you teach the fiqh in a different uh, uh, from a different school and perspective. The benefit of that. What's the benefit of learning comparative fiqh? Any fiqh, well, what's the benefit? I'm sorry? You see it from different angles. See it from a different angle. You see how the fuqaha think about it. And what else? Understand each other clearly. Some people said when you teach the fiqh from a different school, you create a fitna. You don't create a fitna. You create a fitna when you don't respect the different approach. Salaamu alaykum wa barakatuh. Statistically, and observe what we observe that if we teach for example, our community, especially here in America, is a very diverse community. We have a different background. Some people, Maliki's background, some people, Shafi background, some people, Hanafi background, some people, no school background. They don't know what's what school. So the best way is to create it. And when I know that you are doing what you are doing is correct, based in this school, then I say, oh, and we know that Every their school accepted historically. They are they are the Muslims for 1,400 years. They accept few schools of fiqh, for example. So there is no doubt about if somebody asks somebody, I'm following Imam Shafi'i. Uh, for the last 800, 1,000 years, 1,000. Imam Shafi'i born 150 Hijri. Well, 50 Hijri, we are in 1435, right? Today. So since, since uh, that time, Imam Shafi'i was a reference for many people. It's, uh, it's an, an amazing man, close to, close to, to, uh, to 12 or 13, 1300 years. So this is, it's, it's been done that this, uh, the Shafi'i approach of fiqh is accepted. Nobody can come today and they say, no, Imam Shafi'i, you cannot follow Imam Shafi'i in the fiqh as a reference. Nobody can say it. So the Ummah Ajma'at. What's Ajma'at means? Sar Ijma'at. What's Ijma'at? Ijma'at. Ijma'at al Ummah. Anybody? Huh? Consensus. Consensus. That the Ummah, they agree that there is a school, if you follow, they are accepted. Accepted from the Ummah, especially the four Madhahab, the four, the four Madhahab, Madhahab al-Hanafi, Madhahab al-Maliki, Madhahab al-Shafi'i, and al-Hanbali. Uh, uh, Hanbali. These for the Ahl sunnah nobody can, there is other schools that either disappeared but they are accepted. Vahiri and many other, other schools, they disappeared. But historically, they've been accepted as a school. Okay. Inshallah. Can, we can, if you can move this way, inshallah. Okay. We can, we can move a little, little bit to the side, inshallah. So, if you ask a Sunni school, we know, we know the school that historically they've been accepted by everybody. Nobody tell you, no, you are out of Islam if you follow Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Nobody historically said that. And nobody even did debate this. And there is few schools from the other madhab. What's the, mainly the three major, the majority of the Muslims, maybe 90% of the Muslims are Sunni. And Sunni is the main, the mainstream Muslims. And we have, you know, 10 or 15% divided between two other groups, which is 
الشيعة الجعفرية and الخوارش this is the groups the oldest group Shia appear around uh, the second century as group Khawarij the same beginning of them in, in the end of the first, the first century but there is groups inside the Khawarij and inside the Shia that been accepted by the Sunnah they've been accepted Shia has, has many groups for example some of them they've been historically accepted by the majority uh, as they did Zaydiya, it's, it's a group of Shia that all the Sunnah, they consider the Zaydis are as mainstream Muslims. Zaydi is Shia of uh, Yemen. They are in Yemen, Zaydiya. There is no debate about them. Majority of the Sunni, they consider al, 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 al Ja'fariya, al Ithna Ashriya, the uh, Ashriya. The majority of women, they consider them, they have some, but in fiqh, they, they, they are accepted. Many of the Muslims, some Muslims, they have question about, about that. But there is another group that none of the Sunnah and none of the Shia consider them a group that you can follow. And Ismailiyah and many other groups. Ismailiyah, these are, are groups that they, 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 they don't, even the Shia, they don't accept them. As, as part of the, we cannot follow their fiqh, you cannot worship Allah through their, their, their fiqh. And we have for, this is for the, for, for the khawarij, we have the same things, different groups. One of the closest group to Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, they call them al-ibadiyya. Al-ibadiyya, mostly in, in Sultanate Oman. Uh, in Libya, in Algeria, in Tunis, little bit in, in Tunis and Algeria. al ibadiyya is, is a group of Khawarij very close to Ahl Sunnah. Majority of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah consider the Ibadi's fiqh is accepted, in general is accepted as a fiqh. So we don't have any problem. Sufi. So, yes. Sufi. Sufi, it's not a fiqh school. Sufi, it's, 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 it's a different. We didn't talk about aqidah. We didn't talk about, about the, the tariqah or way of worship. We talked about the fiqh. And this, you have to be very careful. So I will talk here about al-fiqh. So when I talk about al-hanbali, al-hanafi, or shafi'i, I talk about the fiqh. So I'm not talking about the aqidah. So this class. So the question is, what fiqh can you worship Allah through and will be accepted? So when we talk about the schools that the Sunnah produce all of them without doubt, and some of the, of the, of the Shia school, the Ja'fari and the Zaydiya, and also the Ibadiyya. There is other group here, they have a very out of the line, out of the line uh, 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 fiqhi opinion. They are not supported with any proof in the history of Islam. So the idea is, when I start teaching, if I put this is the area that, to be generous a little bit, we said there is agreement among the Muslims that if you worship any fiqh that you follow in general, this is schools, you are accepted. So when I Concentrate here for the four schools for the Ahl Sunnah. Hanafi or Maliki or Shafi'i. Why the question here? Teaching these can help, help uh, unify us. Help unify us because when, as we mentioned last week, of course, we said a uh, uh, week before, uh, we said when I, well, when I know that this person is following is following one of the authentic schools. I feel comfortable that he didn't bring something from his pocket or his mind and start worship. No, you worship this way. You, may, you pray. You do this. You do fasting. There is a, an a school, authentic school that supports this opinion, even if it's I'm not follow it, but it's supported by authentic school. 
Because again, as I repeat, none of the Muslims, let's concentrate, go back to our four uh, school. Yes? <coughs> Yes. This is the order. Abu Hanifa is 95 or 90. Uh, Imam Malik, 10 years after that, close to 100, 150. And Imam Hanbal, Hanbal close to 200. And it's, it's, I don't have the, the details, but it's, 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 this, it's easy to find, to, find, to find them out. So this is the order, the chronological order of these of this schools. So let's go back to the four madhab now and their, their opinion. So anybody, if I know that you follow a great school, authentic school, I don't question, I don't. Uh, but if I don't know, I know from the fiqh only what Abu Hanifa or the student of the Abu Hanifa or 1,000 the Hanafi school, what they say. And I, I come to you, I saw you doing something that I never learned. I'm going to come to you. Why you are? This is wrong, and this is this is because I don't know. Even though you are following an authentic school, teaching the comparative fiqh to go back to the opinion here that unified us, because we are if we are divided, and and this is the second reason. Third reason. What is the third benefit from teaching uh, a comparative fiqh? Any other benefits? It's to make you understand your madhab better. Even if you follow the madhab, you understand the Hanafi better when you compare the Hanafi to the Shafi'i. You understand. When you don't compare, you don't understand very well. But when you see, oh, this is, the, the, this is why the Ahnaf said this opinion, because there is a different opinion, and create uh, uh, critical thinking when it comes to the fiqh. People who attend the usul al the qawa'ad al fiqhiya in this class, the class before this class, they can see now better. The same things when you compare the fiqh, you can see, you, you understand the madhab, the madhab better. So we talked about, about again the benefit. There is many other benefits, of course. It's the, uh, the for the imam, special in a diverse community for the imam so you don't you don't you know what's what's uh, uh, what's make make it wrong what's we have a lot of problems again as i mentioned before because people they don't put in consideration the musallin be, 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 behind him if the imam doesn't know uh, know only one madhab and doesn't not able to explain himself created the fitna without without doubt so this is the methodology that we're going to follow. I talked last time about, about the books, because we did this with the Salat. We did a comparative study for the prayer and the Tahara. Alhamdulillah, it took us a few months, but we finish, and our hope that we understand better our Salat and our Ghusl and our Wudu, because of the methodology that we follow. And today we're going to do the same things starting talking about what the resources that we have about the comparative fiqh. There is many books in the history that they are uh, talking, they're talking about, about the, the comparative fiqh. They teach the fiqh not from one madhab, but from more than one madhab. I give two books, old books. Where one, one book is Al-Mughni. Al-Mughni. I don't think there is translation for Al-Mughni. Al-Mughni, it's written by, anybody remember the name of the, who is right Al-Mughni? Ibn Qu, Qudama, Ibn Qudama. Ibn Qudama, great scholars, Hanbali scholars from Dimashq, from Syria. He wrote 12 or, or, or 14 uh, volumes, books, that talk. 31. 30, 30 volumes, depend, the big, the big ones maybe, yeah. Have, have uh, yeah, I think I'll also remember the, the what print, but but there is one the, the thirty small books and there is there is a smaller number and bigger. Al Mughni it's it's a book one of the first uh, book of of comparative fiqh that written long time ago by Ibn Ibn Qudama, and he collect all the opinion of the four schools and also more more than the four schools. He's one of the for great book, a reference for, for the comparative fiqh. There is another, another book. 
it's most is uh, is uh, the name of the book is Bidayatul Mujtahid. Bidayat. This book is translated in English. Bidayatul Mujtahid. Wanihayat al Muqtasid. Al Muqtasid. Bidayatul Mujtahid. Wanihayat al Muqtasid. And this book is written by Ibn Rushd from Andalus, Ibn Rushd al Andalusi. It's a very great book, very, very, uh, two volumes only, but you have, they have the book. It's a very, uh, it's, it's tell you, answer the question why the fuqaha, they have a different opinion. For every mas'ala, every subject, it give you the reason why, لماذا اختلف الفقهاء? Sometimes he give you the language reason, sometimes give you the hadith, sometimes the interpretation of the ayah. It's, it's bring your level. This is why he called it the beginning of the mujtahid. If you want to go in the path of ishtihad, you have to read this book. If you have your purpose only to know the different opinion, you read this book. So it's a very important book. It's translated. We have, we have an English uh, uh, copy in the masjid. Anybody who is really, really interested, who want to be mujtahid, you can start reading this book. Is is give you a great idea. Yeah. So, what is the meaning of al muqtasid? Al muqtasid is the person. He doesn't go for word. He doesn't want to go deeper in fiqh, but he know only to know uh, the different opinion. So, can be bidaya or can be nihaya. Bidaya means the beginning. Nihaya means the end. If you are mujtahid, you want to be mujtahid, this is your step number one. If you want to be muqtasid, the person get only the, 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 the rulings and the ahkam, and don't want to be mujtahid. Then, you, this is the book, your end. You read this book and you stop there. But if you are mujtahid, this is your bidai. So the book has, it's a very smart title. It said, it's a book, if you want to be mujtahid, this is your first step. If you want to be muqtasid, a person just get what I need, this is also going to be your book. So, so it's a good idea for a co commercial. So Ibn Rushd is a very, very, uh, very an important uh, books. This is two of the books. There is more, more other contemporary books that we're going to use, inshallah. One of the, it's the, the newest book and the most authentic book is Al-Fiqh Al-Islami Wa Adillatuhu. They start translating. The, the guy just finished a few years ago from this book. He's still alive, in my understanding. Is uh, Dr. Zuhaili. He's from Egypt, Wahhabat Zuhaili. He wrote, uh, I think, uh, 12 uh, volumes like this one. He collect all the authentic and, and one of the, of, the, of the most authentic has a temporal, contemporary issues in it. And you talk about, about uh, is, is very authentic and the book that we use, inshallah, all the time, but it has, has details in it. For example, there is three chapters about Salat, volume about Salat. You talk about uh, Siam, all in this chapter talking about Siam. So I'm going to write the name of the book. The, the writer is Wahbat Zuhaili, Doctor uh, Wahbat Zuhaili. And the book is Al Fiqh al Islami wa Adilatuhu. Al Fiqh al Islami, the Islamic Fiqh wa Adilatuhu, and it's proof wa Adilatuhu. So he gives the proof for every Fiqh ruling from the Quran or Sunnah or Jma' or, or whatever the proof is. And the writer is Dr. Wahbat al Zuhaili. It's very, uh, yeah, Zuhaili. Uh, I think they start translate some, some of the volumes. It's very important book, and, and uh, we're going to use, inshallah, this book also. There is a, traditionally the book that I mentioned last week. We have Al Fiqh Al Al Madahab Al Arba'a. This is uh, Al Jaziri. This is the book. Is four volumes talk about only the four madhab, the different opinion about it. About it, it is a very good book also. Uh, I think it's uh, translated many parts of this book. Also, the name of it is Al Fiqh Kitab Al Fiqh Al Al Madhab Al Arba. Fiqh according the four madhab. 
المذاهب مذهب الأربعة What's the four مذاهب So the الجزيري is is the the writer of this book very important book has has a lot of the so al madhahab al arba'a he means al hanafi and al al maliki al shafi'i and and al hanbali hanbali we have another book we're going to use the including the ja'fari madhahab is al fiqh ala al madhahab al khamsa he add he add one he said the fiqh according to the four five madhahab he wrote this book after this book. He said, oh, you forget one important madhab. It's our madhab. He's from Lebanon. He's Ja'fari Shia. And he add this book. We're going to, to inshallah, study also from this book. The writer is Mughniya, Jawad Mughniya. He's a uh, fiqh sheikh of the, of the. So this is why what we're going to, to, to do. Any question about this? Any question about, about, about that? Okay, inshallah, if there is no questions. Any question about the madhahab? Any question about before we start? So this is why what we agree about. We're going to, and we saw the benefit, and we're going to go from there, inshallah. Yes? If you, if you personally are asked to give a, a fatwa, do you have to go through all these books, or these the ones you have to go through? If it's an official fatwa, of course, you have to go and, and, and read the different opinion and, and see uh, the person in front of you who has what's the background. If somebody strict Hanafi, you give them the opinion of the Hanaf. Uh, you, you go and, and you, the, the, you, what we do, it's easy. We're not going to Muamalat. Uh, it's the Fiqh of Tahara, cleanness, Fiqh of Salat, Fiqh of Sawm, Hajj, Zakat. Mostly, it's, it's easy. But when you go to, to details about, about the, the mu'amalat and all of this, you have to go, go and review or, or mirath, inheritance. This is uh, without doubt you have, you have to go for, for that. There is another book that, uh, that we talk about. It is Fiqh al-Sunnah. Fiqh al-Sunnah, Sayyid Sabah, is, is, is a very, uh, it's translation. There is translation of this book. It's basically, he gives the different opinion, but he gives what he think is the most authentic opinion based on his opinion. He's scholars from Al-Azhar, but he's, he's not tied to any madhab. So he can give you uh, what he think is the strongest opinion. In his book, uh, translated in one volume, or also there is three volume of Faqah Sunnah, and there is translation has four books, uh, small books. The writer is Sayyid Sabak. Sayyid Sabak is, uh, is uh, Faqih also, so Fiqh al-Sunnah, we talked about this, Fiqh al-Sunnah, Fiqh al-Sunnah, Sayyid Sabaq, Sayyid Sabaq, very good, but there is translation of the, if you write Fiqh al-Sunnah, you come, Fiqh al-Sunnah for you, okay? What volume, uh, which volume is? This is, this is volume number, number uh, two. Number two. two. Do you have, do you find it there? Yeah, there is. Uh, Already they put it there? Arabic is there. 2008. Yes. The, uh, did not get some question. Uh, Imam Abu Hanif was born in Iraq. Yeah. So what would explain how he started in Madhab in Iraq before Imam Malik in Medina? There is, there is fuqaha and there is madhab before the four madhab. In Medina, for example, there, there is cities that the, the knowledge started from there. When you say Kufa, who was in Kufa before Abu Hanifa? Yeah, the other that left. Who? Who is Sahabi was in Kufa? Imam Ali. No, Imam Malik he never left Imam Medina. Ali. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. Uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. There is a group of Sahaba who established there. And they started teaching the fiqh. But we don't say, we cannot say that some people, they consider before Imam Hanifa there is a school of the Kufa established by Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and, and others. And who was in Medina before Imam Malik? Abdullah ibn Umar. 
the great uh, uh, Medina, there is, there is uh, uh, Muhammad ibn Abi, uh, Abi Bakr Siddiq and there is other ulama and there is a tabi'een who came before this. So you have sahaba, you have a tabi'een and then the scholars came to collect and they build their schools, they build their schools. So there is fuqaha before them, but their schools, because they didn't establish the school, and Islam didn't start, didn't spread enough to follow everybody one school, so. Okay, so if you have a question, you can ask. Let's start with the fasting, inshallah, and we're going to start from, from, from this, this. Uh, okay, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. We're going to start sawm, as sawm. Fiqh as sawm. I would like to read an introduction with from Az Zuhayli. This is the third, his third chapter. Chapter is about siyam wal i'tikaf. He put one chapter about this. We're going to make some uh, introduction, read from his book, inshallah, and we'll go to, to that. So we're going to talk, first of all, there is eight chapters that, inshallah, we're going to cover about Psalm and Al-I'tikaf. Number one is a ta'rif of Psalm. We're going to talk about definition of Psalm. And Ruknuhu wa zamanuhu wa fawa'iduhu. Also, we, he, he talked about the arkan. The, the pillar of the, of, the, of the psalm. And what we're going to learn also from the different books, shurut al-psalm, the condition, uh, shurut saha. Uh, he talked about, first of all, the importance of Ramadan, Shah Ramadan as the month of, month of fasting. We're going to talk about the different kind of fasting. Psalm is not only psalm Ramadan, but different kind of fasting. The time of the fasting of Ramadan, the way that we're going to prove the beginning of the month, the question of the calculation, and the, the new moon, and the crescent, and the ru'ya, we're going to talk about this, inshallah. So prepare your questions for, for that. This is rain, huh? Allahumma ja'alu sayyiban nafi'ah. It's, it's uh, weird, they're called, today the temperature 110 in, in, in uh, Tunisia and the Qairawan and he has seven uh, ninety something. What, what page is that? Is that I'm just curious. This is this is the four hundred ninety ninety five. He said Shurut al Saum, Shurut al Wujub, wa Shurut al Saha. We're going to talk about the condition of that. Sunan al Saum wa Adab, the Sunan of the Saum, and the manners of the Saum and the Makruhat, dislike things in Saum. Al-A'dhar, Al-Mubiha, Al-Fitr, the reasons or the excuses for somebody to don't fast. We're going to talk about this. Uh, what's break your fasting and uh, what doesn't break your fasting. Qadha'u al-Sawm, the qadha of the Sawm. Wa kaffaratuhu, and the Sawm as a kaffara, a kaffara to Sawm. And with fidya, what the fidya means, and we're going to. Ma yalzim lo fa'u bi minan nudur, fasting as another. And, and this is the main, the main, main things they're going to, to talk about. It. In this book, we're going to talk about shurut al sound, the condition of the sound, inshallah. Before that, siyam, the definition of the siyam, and the shurut, the condition, uh, al muftirat, things that break very similar to, to what the other book said, and uh, aqsam al sound, the different kind of sound, and also. Siyam al kafara, as as we mentioned there. What's makruh? What's mustahab? Yom shak, the day of the doubt. We're going to talk. What's the day of the doubt? Is very important. That the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم said, لا يجوز الصيام. You cannot fast in the day of doubt. And we're going to see the different opinion. ثبوت الهلال. How to be sure that the hilal, the the crescent. Is there and what's the methodology that, that we follow? Ulama uh, al-Falak uh, and and his contemporary put the astronomer and the opinion about it and and we, this few discussion. Uh, 
So let's start from the definition, inshallah. Any question about fasting, about sound? Okay. Let's read. I'm going to read this Ta'rif al Sawm, definition in Arabic and also translated, inshallah. He said, Qal Ta'rif al Sawm, wa ruknuhu wa zamanu wa fawaiduhu. A Sawm lugatan al imsaku wal kafu an al shay. Sama is an Arabic verb. Verb means Sama al Sawm, fasting in Arabic. The word from the verb Sama. Sama means stop something. Al kaf an shay to stop, stop doing something. So, for example, okay, you can say sumtu ala. This is how Arabic use it. Sumtu ala. Sumtu. Sorry. Sumtu ala, and you can put things. Sumtu ala al akli. I'm fast on eating, means I didn't stop eating. Sumtu ala al kalami, means I stopped talking. And we have example in the Quran, Zakaria. And I nadartu Maryam also. And I nadartu lil Rahmani sawman, falan ukalima liyoma in siya. I make nether, I promise Allah of fasting, so I'm not going to talk to anybody. It's fasting not on eating and drinking, but it's fasting and talking. And it's not part of the Islamic ibadat. There is people, one time I called somebody, he, 10 years ago, he, has a reason, he took the phone, and he's not talking. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. And he hung up. I called him again. And he said, Ya akhi, I'm fasting. I told him, what was fasting? He said, إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ سَوْمًا فَلَمْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ أَنْسِيهَا So if you are fasting, why you pick up? He said, to, to tell you that I'm fasting. But you didn't understand. I'm so sorry. Where you get this? This is not in Sharia al Islam. This is before they stop and talking. But it's good sometimes to stop talking. Sometimes it's help. So you can say, سَوْمْ عَلَى الْكَلَامِ سَوْمْ عَلَى الشَّرَابِ سَوْمْ عَلَى الْأَكْلِ سَوْمْ عَلَى المنكرات. You fast, you don't do haram. Because the Rasulullah said, fasting, it's not only fasting on the ta'am and sharab, but fasting in the munkar. Or fasting that you don't say bad things. This is also, also for fasting. So this is the word. The root is, is, is the fast. Sama means stop. Al-kaf an al-shay. Wal-imsak. Wal-kaf an al-shay. Yuqalu sama an al-kalami. Ay amsak anhu. Qala ta'ala an Maryam. Uh, عليه السلام إني نذرت للرحمن صوما فلن أكلم اليوم إنسيا أي صمتا وإمساكا عن الكلام وقال العرب صام النهار إذا وقف سير الشمس وسط النهار عند الظهيرة They said صام النهار in the old Arabic means the sun it's a noon time because the sun they think that the sun stopped in the noon time for sometimes to make the, the, the things warm and start moving. But it's not really, uh, it doesn't stop. But, but they think that the sun stopped. So they say, Samat al-Shamsu, means the sun stopped on the, on the. This is from linguistically. So be careful when you read the ayah of, of Maryam or any use of the psalm. Allahumma la taqtulna bi ghadabika wa la tahlana bi a'adhabika wa aafina qabla dhalika, inshaAllah. Qal, the, the definition, so you have to be careful about the use, the roots. Very important to get the, the root of the Arabic words. Allah choose the word for our deen from the Arabic language for purpose. Most of the people, they, they, they don't go to the meaning. Uh, what's the linguistic meaning? Linguistic meaning help you to understand the definition, the sh Sharia definition. قال وشرعا This is the definition, official definition of fasting. هو الإمساك نهارا. إمساك means you hold, you stop during the daytime عن المفطرات بنية من 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 طلوع الفجر إلى غروب الشمس. قال it's stopping anything that break your fast from بنية with نية. 
Somebody can stop, doesn't eat anything, doesn't drink anything, no muftirat, but it's not with niya of fasting. So it's not, this is not the fasting that we talk about it. The niya is very important. Somebody want to lose weight, I'm not going to eat. It's not healthy, but you know. But, but it's, it's not fasting. The same thing, somebody, we have this discussion before, somebody go and took a shower. That is consider ghusl or not. Most of the ulama, you have to have niya. Even you do all the part of the wudu, but it's just, it's hot. You, you want to wash your, your, your face and your... So it's niya, every ibadah has the niya. And this is the opinion of the Malikis. When they have different opinion about wudu and ghusl, some people said, you don't need the, some of the ahnaf, you don't need the niya in ghusl, you don't need the niya in wudu. The other said, the ghusl wudu is ibadah, and every ibadah required the niya. And this is very important. So the definition of fasting, it's stopping doing any muftirat. Al-muftirat, so al imsaku this is lughatan, means linguistically in, in the Arabic language. Lughatan. And shar'an. Shar'an means in sharia. Al-sawm, what's sawm sharia? Is al-imsaku, which means stopping. An, al-imsaku ala an mada. An al-muftirat. And this is very important things. Al-muftirat. What's the break? There is many, the list of the muftirat. Everything that break your fasting is muftirat. Drinking, eating, many other things that muftirat break your wudu. We're going to talk about all the muftirat. So stopping in the muftirat, biniyatin. You have the niya. So we have a muftirat, the key word. We have niya, the intention. Muftirat, things that break your wudu. Min, tulu' al-fajri. Ila, Ghurubi al-shams. This is the def this is the technical definition of fasting. What's fasting? Fasting is stopping. Don't do the muftirat with niya that you are fasting, worshiping Allah from the fajr until the sunset. Clear. So this is this is the the tarif. الإمساك أي أن الصوم امتناع فعليا عن شهوتي البطن والفرج وعن كل شيء حسي يدخل الجوف من دواء ونحن we're going to talk about all the مفترات الإمساك عن مفترات وزاد المالك والشافعي ركن آخر وهي النية ليلا okay so yes I'm sorry النية ليلا yeah we're going to talk about the نية in this in the psalm the نية is a big deal here is the niya in one time, the night of Ramadan, does it work? Or just every night you have to, you have to renew the niya, we're going to see the different opinion about it. But without doubt, have to have niya. So this is, this is the, the, the definition. Yes? How do you say al-imsak? Al-imsak. Al-imsaku. Al-imsaku means amsaka in Arabic. When you hold, you say amsaktu. When you hold amsaktu an al ta'am means I stopped eating. Amsaktu al-qalama, the, 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 the pen here, the marker, I hold it. It's not going anywhere. But also when we talk about imsak, the time of the imsak is the time of the fajr. When you read in the calendar for Ramadan, you say the imsak and the iftar. Imsak, it's the beginning, the fajr, and the iftar, it's when the sun sets, you, you, you can break, they, break you. They deal with the niya, saut, or what? Saut, or asiya. Silent or loud. The niya? Well, we're going to talk about, about the niya. I mean, the niya and the different, yes. What's the root of uh, What does that actually mean? Fatara, fatara. We talked about Fatir al-Samawati wal-Ardi. Fatara, it's to in initiate something. Something wasn't. Fatir al-Samawati wal-Ardi. is one of the name of Allah, Fatir. It's something, Fatir uh, al-Insan. Uh, Fatara al-Samawati means the creator. In meaning what? 
that create things from it wasn't before and originated, when I started, when you start something. So al iftar, you, you were fasting and you, you start, you are mumsik, and then after you start eating. So the iftar here or anything else that you started, you didn't do it before and you started now, we say fatartu. And also infitar. Infitar means, means the creation, the beginning of the creation. This is the meaning of it. Any other question? So let's go. We're going to talk about the Niyyah. We're going to start talking about Ash-Shurut. So quickly, we're going to talk Shurut al sound, the Shurut of the sound. Let's start. We're going to. There is, of course, a lot of benefit of fasting. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, As-Sawmu li wa ana ajzi bihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about. Yes, I'm sorry. When we are saying psalm over here, it's the the nawafil or the. Talk about all the psalm. Yeah. We're not talking about psalm Ramadan. So psalm is a way of worship, <coughs> way to connect with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we believe in Allah, and we connect. This is the ibadat. So the psalm is ibadah, is a form of worship. As as salat, as the zakat, as the hajj. So these are a way to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship Him. The purpose of the, of the fasting is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah said. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مَنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said clearly that the fasting was the people before us is that, is that being, being asked to fast. So Siam here, he said Kutiba, we're going to talk about Siam is, is Maktub, Kutiba, is Farth. And Kama Kutiba Ala Ladina Man Kablikum. So the nations before us, they have fasting. Allah is the only one who be worshipped through the fasting. This is why Allah said in the hadith, As-sawmuli wa ana ajzi bihi. The fasting is for me. It's different than any other ibadah. It's very special. Because you, the effort that you do in fasting, because the fasting is the, the control of the desire. And this is very important. The purpose of the fasting is not to kill the desire. This is you don't fast until you die. But the purpose of the fasting or you don't fast until you hurt yourself. This is why, as we're going to see, there is if you are sick, if you are cannot able to fast, or the fasting is going to extend your sickness, or going to make you sick, you, it's haram for you to fast. So the purpose of the fasting is to elevate us to a level to be able to control our desires. And the desire is not only the desires of the physical desires, but also the desire of, of anger and revenge and, and all of this controlled by the fasting. And this is if we control our desire well, we are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are be able to what? To be, to have taqwa. What's the definition of taqwa? What's the verb, the root verb of taqwa? Ittaqa. What's ittaqa means? Huh? Ittaqa. Be mindful. Be mindful or conscious. What's literally the verb ittaqa? Ittaqa means avoid. Ittaqaytuka. I'm going like this. I saw you in my way. I moved. I avoid you. Ittaqa means to avoid. This is literally what it means means to avoid the haram for the sake of Allah, to be able to avoid the haram, to don't do the haram. So the muttaqi is a person who conscious about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he or she able
to avoid the haram for the sake of Allah. And the best example the Sahaba described is the field that you have a lot of uh, broken glass or, or uh, throw, thrones and, and you said, what to do? Uh, the Sahaba, he said, you shammara, you, you pick up your, your uh, because there is dangers there, and try to avoid, and, and try to avoid it. Like you feel, and, and has a lot of harm things, and you avoid here, you go there, and you try to, this is exactly the taqwa what it is. You try to avoid the harm, and in this case, it taqwa means avoid the haram. So the effort that you do to avoid the haram have to be effort. Shammara, and, and, and means you are ready, and, and you, you know that it's going to be there, some effort will be. Not every food in front of you, you eat it. Not every money that you find, you take it. Not every munkar that you get in front of you, you, you go for. So the purpose of the saw is to increase our ability to avoid the haram. And this is the greatest purpose of the fasting. So fasting makes us stronger by controlling our desires. Unfortunately, sometimes the fasting, special fasting of Ramadan, Ramadan, do exactly the opposite. It's the month of shahawat. It's the month of the desires. Become. Yeah, hasbun amana, exactly. The food and the people waste a more money spent than any other month. This is defeat the purpose of the fasting. Allah said, la'allakum. What's la'alla? Means, la'allakum tattaqoon. Perhaps you may achieve the taqwa. So this is the purpose of the fasting. And this is what makes the fasting greater than any other things and our other form of ibadah. So the fasting, it's the purpose of the fasting, as every other purpose of the ibadah. It's not to hurt us. It's not, as some people think, the fasting that you punish your body, because of your body, our body is the, uh, it's, it's a punishment. Allah put our souls in our body to punish us because of our sins. So we have to free ourselves. As Muslim, we don't try to free ourselves from our body. The body, it's not, it's not a punishment. The desires is not a punishment. But when the desires, as we talked in the Fajr Tafsir, hubbu shahawati, the love of the desire. When you become slave to your desires, then we have problem. When you cannot stop, stop controlling yourself from doing the haram, then we have problem. Then if you, if you have money that it's not yours and you desire there, want you to have more money. So you be a slave to your desire and you take the money even if it's not yours. What you did, you become a slave. So the, the Islam is again, it's not to kill the desire. Many, many groups, they talk about the purification in a wrong, wrong approach some extreme Sufis and, and they, they think they took the concept that it's not an Islamic concept. We don't kill the desire because when you kill the desire, you make created an unbalance. We live in very, very our society. It's, it's the, the worst society in the history that created unbalance between in the internal between our desire. Either you kill the desires find people, you know, in every, uh, uh, the society doesn't, doesn't uh, encourage either kill the desires or allow the desire to go ways that never been before. Either people are a slave of the desire or they kill the desire. And this is in the Muslim community and this is the problem here where, where, where the unbalance come. The Sahaba, they're talking about, about an amazing approach for them. Uh, the, for them, they, they make, they have this balance, and you know the story of the uh, three companions who came from Shem, from a Christian land. And this is a Christian concept. Before a Christian is Greek concept. All the Greek concept, that the, the soul is pure, and the body is, is mudanness. 
mudannas means it's it's sinful sin it's the, the body is is something dirty and you have to as much as you can that you you kill your your body in not physically but you you uh, it's not what what Allah said you train yourself you control if your desire is under control you are fine so the psalm has has an amazing role to free ourselves to free us from being slave and every time that we free ourselves from being slave to anything we become abd of Allah and this is what la ilaha illallah means la ilaha illallah has two parts la ilaha part one second one illallah so you cannot really be a worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly without destroy uh, or without la without the hadam we call it that you free yourself from being slave to any other things other than Allah can be your desire can be people can be there is people they are slave and they, to, to their desires so you cannot be a full abd of Allah if you are a slave to something else you cannot worship two things so the same thing fasting it's make us closer to illallah by destroying by by make us free from being slave of our desire and this is take a lot of effort the fasting without doubt the correct fasting the fasting the pure fasting it helps us to achieve this goal and free us from our desires and make us abd to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the concept of, of taqwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, li wa ana ajzibihi. There is nothing more rewarding from the ibadat more than sound. Allah said, it's for me and I'm going to reward you for sound. So nobody, even the malaika in some riwayat that they cannot put the real reward of sound because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala biduni hisab. So this is why we benefit of sound as a ibadah, as a worship. There is people who fast one month, they say fasting other religion, say one month I fast for meat, I don't eat meat for one month. Some people I don't eat this things or the other things. But the, our fasting as we're going to understand it, we cannot understand the fasting without connected with taqwa, without connected with ourselves, freedom. Saum, it's not, as Ali ibn Abi Talib said, many people understand the Saum to show their strength. I'm not going to eat during the day. But spiritually, did you really increase or grow after you fast the whole day? In the iftar, the moment that you go to break your fast, ask yourself, is my iman today, at that moment, better than my iman when I start yesterday or not? If you don't see growth, you know that you're fasting, there is something wrong with the fasting. So we have to improve our fasting. Sometimes, man, this is why Rasulullah said, the dua at the moment of the iftar mustajab, because it's supposed to be the peak of your spiritual and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why we have to understand the psalm it's not just jilada, uh, 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 he said, Ali ibn Abi Talib. It's showing the strength. I can't stay and fast in 110 degrees and without, you know. So we have to understand this, inshallah. So this is the definition of, of the psalm. Then we go to the shurut al-psalm. Shurut al-psalm, let's explain the shurut. So any question about, about the psalm as, as one of the form of ibadat? connect us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. If it's not that hard to avoid haram, is it? There's not that much that's haram, so it's not that much of an effort. Shaitan, he can make anything, as we said, zayyana lahum al-shaytan wa a'malahum. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the haram, made it easy, this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, haram can be people, special people engage in business, people engage in life, people they, there is a lot of, a lot of things can do, people uh, they have desire for power, they have desire for, for, for many things and, and sometimes when, when the people they, they, they can, can do haram every second by, by just 
uh, they have hasad, they have jealousy, they have uh, ego, they have, they have, they make zulm to the other people, they take the rights of the people. These people can be all their lives, every second they are in, 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 in sin by making zulm continuously to the other people. And it's not as, as alhamdulillah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us, will be, will be, will be great. It's not, it's not difficult if shaitan, your shaitan is weak. But if you be feeding your shaitan, will be, the haram will be very attractive to you. This was zayyana lahum shaitan a'malahum. Shaitan, something haram, the worst, the ugliest act. As we mentioned in tafsir, for the Arabs, there is nothing ugly that you kill your own children, right? For the Arab, is an act of honor. Shaitan made it his pride to kill your own daughter. And the Quran talk about this. There is nothing more ugly than, than you hate people or you have jealousy and you have for some people become become there. Eating the haram, making money from the riba, making money, you know, taking the, the rights of the others. Many harams shaitan can desire it and make it very attractive, very good. Make it very attractive and and zayyana, the decorated. So we have to be very, very careful. But alhamdulillah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the haram look as it is, it's not attractive, this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without doubt, fasting is one of the ways to make it easy to don't do the haram. This is this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Let's go to shurut. Yes. Shurut we have two kinds of shurut, and this is a key concept that we have to uh, understand. We talked about it uh, in the salat and the, and, the, and the tahara. We have shurut wujub, and we have shurut sah. Can somebody, anybody remember who was here for the fiqh of salat and tahara? Oh, nobody. You are here. Raise your hand. It's okay. Raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. You attend some of the classes in here? Some of you in the classes? Okay. No problem. Shurut wujub. Wujub. It's pre, what do you call it? Pre uh, required conditions that make the fasting wajib for somebody. Shurut, when the fasting become a farth for you. This we call them shurut al -sahha. One, two, three, if you collect them, four, five, if you collect them, the fasting will be wajib for you. Shurut al -sahha. one, two, three, four, or whatever, how many shurut, if you miss one of them, your fasting, it's not correct. So we have in every ibadah, we have to know shurut, Al Wujub and Shurut al Sah. Can somebody give me one of Shurut Wujub al Salat? Pre condition that make the Salat obligatory far on you. Bulugh, the age, okay? Same, basically, not insane. The age. Ah, okay, it's Al Aqal. Aqal. Somebody insane is not is not required to to uh, uh, the salat is not wajibah or child salat is not wajibah for for that. okay good any other shurut huh? the timing salat al fajr salat al maghrib it's not far for us because the maghrib is not the adhan is not yet so it's not far for you now but salat al asr is far for the people who didn't pray yet. These are, we call them, and there is a list of them. So we call them, we call them shurut wujub. Shurut wujub. We're going to go quickly about shurut wujub al sawm. Qal qadamna anna sawm ramadan and wajib. And this is first of all, we have to know that the fasting is farth. Anybody give us the proof of the dalil that sayas sawm is farth or wajib? What's the proof that fasting is worship? 
Quran. What Allah said. The ayah we have to remember. Yeah. yeah. How how the proof? Kutiba alaykum siyamu. We just say the ayah. And this is we call it ma'lumun min adini bidharura. What's ma'lumun min adini bidharura? All the ummah since the time of Rasulullah until now agree that fasting Ramadan is farad for every person that the fasting is farad for him or her. That all the Muslims, it's known among the Muslims and there is no different opinion that the fasting of Ramadan is farad. Except the guy who came to me a few weeks ago debating about, he said, I'm going to understand the Quran. Uh, I have a new understanding of the Quran. Fasting, he said, Saum, what Saum mean? He went to the dictionary, he looked for all meaning of Saum. He find one meaning, Saum it's to push uh, something or, or, you know, it's not imsak. He said this is means in Shah Ramadan, it's, Allah doesn't say fast, but he said, uh, stand up against the, the bad, the corruption. He says, I told him, are you sure? Do you know Arabic? He said, I, I'm learning. I have, he have a translation of the Arabic dictionary. And he go and he find meaning. He take the meaning from the context and he is, is very. All the ulama of Islam, they agree if somebody said, you cannot be Muslim. And you said, and you said, I don't believe that Ramadan, fasting Ramadan is farth. You are out of Islam. You cannot say this big difference. You don't fast is something. But you say fasting, it's not farth. This is something else. It means you're rejecting the Quran. You're rejecting the understanding of the ummah of the day. So fasting for Ramadan is, is, is farth. With, with, with the Quran, with the hadith, with the ijma'ul ummah. That the ummah, all of them agree and fast Ramadan generation after generation, and this is what the fasting means. So, because it's farz, it has shurut. Qal, when is the time? One minute. One minute for the adhan? Eight minutes. Okay, inshallah. So I'm going to give you one, one, uh, uh, one condition, and we're going to finish, inshallah, this is the, the next week, inshallah. As every other ibadah, we have the two conditions, al-balagh, al-aql. So al wujub here, first of all, al balagh al aqal. This is the two conditions that we're going to quickly talk about them. al bulugh it's puberty. And al aqal somebody mentally is able to, to understand and able to differentiate. You can be balagh, not aqal, and you can be aqal and not balagh. We call them as sabiyul mumayiz. Sabiyul mumayiz is, is not bulugh yet, especially when the bulugh, the natural bulugh used to be in a different age, up to 18 for the Malikis. But because of the, the mess that we are doing with our food and everything, the bulugh, as, as I said this many times, is going down. This is a very dangerous. In 10 years, 11 or 10 years, the drop, the average blue with seven months. I think from the early 90s to, to five years ago, I think, the study. And it's very scary. I mean, the people younger and younger age, they're achieving the blue. Physically, they are better. You know, they, they, they are achieve the blue. But, but mentally, it's a psychology, it's socially, they are not. And this is very, very scary because, the, the, because of we're destroying our, 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 our food. Uh, because of the food and what we eat, it's make a uh, grow. You eat the chicken that's been injected by hormones and everything. And what's happened? That come to you and you grow fast. You grow fast, faster than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us first. Eh? And, and this is, can be a very big issue. There is people now seven years and they are seven, eight years, and they're achieving buluq, which is, which is, which is, which is a very unnormal.
and yeah, the, the, for how they're going to deal with the uh, that issue, I mean, is that, is that going to become an issue? It's, it, it is. Nobody talk about it yet. Because the aql, you know, is... You know, it, it's the maturity and, and the, the, the aql, uh, it's without doubt, this is why this condition is there. Question about the definition of the aql the and mumayz. You, you see, I see what you mean. You can be bulugh. I think the fuqaha they have to, but the parents they have to be aware about this. How to, because there is there is two conditions: the food and the exposure. Exposure to the haram, exposure to many things, can uh, can the brain. When the brain start thinking about things and seeing things that they didn't see before. It's, it's, it's ejected, make the body and, and the physical. This is still the study, still, of course, uh, under, under. But it's a very serious, especially for the coming generation, children, grandchildren. And you have to, have to think about it. Uh, as if you are able to delay, even now people thinking about uh, Muhammad Rasulullah, to do the opposite. The opposite hormone, which is going to mess up all of things. The question of the food and the master of the food, it's affecting not only the bulugh, affecting the, the desires, affecting many problems spreading now, psychological problems and social and biological things because of the, of the food. I don't know if we have, inshallah, we'll talk about this, inshallah, in the future. And you, so, you said something, the, 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 the alcohol in, in, this, in our society now is. In other cases, proceeding balug because now the, they are exposing our children to so much stuff, video games, television. I watch little children who are now they're so verbal, you know, beyond what you would see 20 years ago, and they're, they're just picking up stuff. We we have to we have to we're going to have a shala lectures about raising the children and and. Uh, when uh, we talk about, about this issue, the serious issues, inshallah, we have to think about it. Okay, inshallah, please write your name, uh, your email, be sure before you leave. And inshallah, we're going to uh, it's, uh, continue this fiqh class, uh, inshallah, next, next Tuesday at 7 o'clock, inshallah. Let's make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to benefit from this learning and make us, prepare us well for the great month of Ramadan, inshallah. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our knowledge and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us from what we learn. Allahumma zidna ilma, Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una, wa anfa'na bima alamtana, Allahumma ahdina wa ahdibina, wa ja'anna sabab lima nihtada, Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabarakta wa ta'alayta, ya dal jalali wal ikram. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. We're going to send some material إن شاء الله. Please be sure to give your your emails. الله أكبر الله أكبر